Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's episode of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our bonus packages. Please go to MikeO'MaraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and even better, you'll be helping out TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Hello. Hi uh, there. I need a hypnotist. I, I need a, I'm turning into a walrus hippo manatee. I am, <laughs> I am so fat. It's, it's getting So you're to going be, straight uh, to hypnosis now? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I uh, what happened? Carla, like, Car- well, going up to uh, north, we the transitions in our life when we go north, south, south, north mm-hmm. uh, is time to you know, hey, reinvigorate and stuff like that. Here it is. I'm going to give it to you straight. Please. This is no excuse. I'm not making any excuses. I have blown it. I have totally blown it. I was in a doctor's office for the better part of three years. Okay, so suddenly when I had a healthy year. Uh, I, I, I just kind of threw caution to the wind and I did what I wanted to do. And, uh, I am, it, it's, it's, it sucks. I've talked about the uh, battle of weight yes. and, uh, I am just here to say that, uh, the reason I'm bringing it up publicly is because I need to be shamed publicly and shamed. I need to uh, publicly shamed Shame. to uh, get my act together Shame. because, uh, they, it, and I, and I open the door for ball busting this summer. Uh, and spot checks for my calorie intake because I know that up north in the great state, the Pine Tree State, vacation land, the state of Maine, I know there is potential for bad eating, and I'm here to tell you that uh, fried fat food, uh, mayonnaise, uh, sugar, that I, I, look. Pastries. Some people, some people deserve it. Uh, some people do not, and I do not, and uh, it's just, I want to be fit uh, for, and certainly by Las Vegas time, I want to be fitter than I am. I will not be fit by Las Vegas, even if I was to start today, but I am tired of being a fat manatee, and when I go mm. to a stadium, there is no better example. When I lay, but when I sit down into a chair yes. in a stadium, and I, I have to go, and it goes... <laughs> Where you where you where you basically put your <laughs> hips on and then you slide into it. Yes. I don't know if I would be a hundred pounds lighter and not still go through that. No, I probably would. But because my ass is not fat. No, it, but, but it's, it's the just width a, is a problem, but still stadiums suck. They do for fat people. They do. And what stuns Except me, for the food. The food is very good. No, it's not good. It's garbage. It's trans fat laden swill. I might as well scoop up what beluga le- leaves in the front yard and put it on a plate and microwave it. And they go, hmm, this is good for me. No, <laughs> it's not good. And I, I, I'll i get to the fact that I went to the hockey game last night. And uh, and I got there super early. And I'm sitting in my seat. Right. And I look at a man that there is no one in my row. And I see this waddling, limping ball <laughs> of shit. Wow. Coming towards me, and where does he park his ass literally next to mine with 70 seats next to me and on his side, too? Yeah. And I said, this is great. And I immediately go into the fat man move. Yeah, you you're almost hugging your arms. yourself. It's the same thing you do on an airplane. And uh, I'm here to tell you this is not the airline's fault or the stadium's fault. This is my fault. And never am I more aware of being a pile of of Stouffer's lasagna in a shirt <laughs> than when I am in a stadium environment. Yeah. It is disgusting. Well, it could have and been I worse. Am disgusted. I'm not as heavy as I've ever been, but I'm working on it. And if I don't stop right now, I'm in trouble. Big, big trouble. And the fact that I, and incidentally, here's a little bulletin too. The fact that I go out and, and slam that little white ball around, right. there's nothing athletic about that. Nothing. I do 12,000 steps. You know what steps are? Steps are nothing. Steps, I might as well be going back and forth to the friggin' refrigerator. Well, you'll have an opportunity to have a more active lifestyle when you get to Maine. There's great well, walking and hiking it's not and stuff fun. like that. It's not fun activity. It's And here's the thing. It's never fun. All right? You want to well, know it what can't the be fit fun. Be? No. Fit people don't do fun things. You know what fun is? Fun is playing golf. 
Yes. That is fun because it's like you ride in a cart and then you stay pour your manatee walrus ass out at where you're right to where your ball Drive is. Drive to the and ball. Then the, and then the then you walk to the green and back and you walk it you do get steps in. Yes. But but you know what not fun exercise is? Walking, running, biking, True. working out in a gym. It's pain. Mm-hmm. There is no losing weight without doing something A that is boring or B that is painful. Mm. Period. I hear you. I totally so I have it. to do what that, but that, I'm not looking forward to what it. What about that adage that it says uh, a great diet will be any uh, a great workout any day? True. True. What I adage will not is that? Need to be, uh, no, because no, I have known forever it is what you take into your body. Yeah. You will be if you what you're talking about if you take a nice lovely little walk or you take a lovely little bike ride, or you even get out and around and you get up and down and you uh, walk around. If you're taking, you know, the right stuff in, minimal amount, you'll be okay. I know what to do. Yeah, the formula is easy, and it really has to be both, though. If you really want to lose weight, you have to exercise. I've lost hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Are you ready but to tell? But primarily, you have lost your weight by I- what you take into your body, not by are- the total exercise. Are you ready, sure. Rob, to tell the team how much weight you've lost? Because We've noticed here in the studio that he mm-hmm. is skinny. for the first. You no, know, that's that's really overstating it. No cameras can make that. You're wearing be true. like big clothes, like those girls uh, in the movies that just don't want to show them <laughs> their, themselves to the world. But, How much have you lost? Because that'll um, make me even more motivated. I am for the first time in maybe since we've come to the DC studios. Uh-huh. I'm under the big three at a oh, point good, good of being at, and I was in excess of 350 at one point. Tricks. So yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Like Christmas wow. of... So you've like, lost 50 pounds. Uh, yeah, just over 50, and maybe more. I don't know. But yeah, I'm under wow. 300, which is pretty exciting. What are you doing? I'm eating less, and I'm walking a little bit. Where are you, where, where, where are you walking? <laughs> Around the neighborhood. I've got a, a one-mile course uh, Look at this mapped guy. out. And then if I go to a second turn, it's a uh, one and three quarters miles. And how long have you been doing that? A eh, couple weeks, few weeks. But I mean, okay. I've I've lost weight. He lost couple weight, weeks and, then start, and, and then started walking. The walking, the walking has walking. happened since the uh, the weight Good. loss. So, yeah. But it's been gradual. Good yeah. Yeah. Good for you. He's right. winning. So, more motivated. I, yeah. More, uh, more hey, motivating. Be best. More motivating. Be best. <laughs> be best. <laughs> be best. Yeah. You don't need so negative. So you're taking e- the Melania <laughs> advice. And you're yeah. Be because best? The, my family was bullying me. They were calling me fat. <laughs> hey, fatty, fat, fat. I was I was in bed this morning, and my son came running in. Uh-huh. And uh, and we were wrestling with his little monk monk, which is his stuffed monkey that he okay. sleeps with. And he was pointing at my stomach. Big belly, big belly, big belly. He's doing this That's cute. cute little voice. Yeah, it's adorable. <laughs> um, you know. And so, yeah. you can, he, he doesn't even know he's shaming you. No. Yeah. You could just point back at him and go, orphanage, orphanage, orphanage. That's yeah, where you're going. I know. I know. I, when my well, mom gained weight, I used to ask her if we were going to have another, a little brother or a little sister when I was a little baby. Uh-huh. Um, and she was like, stop it. And I'm like, are we? And I'd rub her belly. I've been breaking balls since I was a kid. Uh, right. And uh, That's not breaking balls. That's just stupid. And then. <laughs> <laughs> you don't pick on your mom and ask if she's pregnant. That's she not lost right. the weight. We shame mm-hmm. each other, and I showed my mom. That's uh, what love is. I showed my mom my big fat face picture, and she said, "Oscar, qué está pasando?" I'm like Oscar, what's happening, right? And then, <laughs> you know, because clearly sounds I, better in Spanish. I've, I've done this to myself. Like she, that's right. all she had to say. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. was like, you know what? Maybe one less fruit bar a night instead of eating three. And with me, it's to, it, to be perfectly honest with you. With me, it's in between. Mm-hmm. It's in between. It's not succumbing to hunger when I want to. So I, I'm I'm shaming myself publicly because I want to be I want to be aware of it. I want to be aware of that. And you know I'm going up to the land of uh, emaciation. You know your emaciation station. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, <laughs> welcome. Here's your whole family. Here's your whole praying mantis family. No, <laughs> that's not true because my extended family uh, we all fight it. Every every sure. male in my family fights it. Mm-hmm. But it is uh, it's. Uh, what a drag. What a drag. If I could change anything about my world, I would change that. Genetically, I would be uh, Daryl Nichols. That's uh, our old but engineer. Not, but not socially. Yeah, not socially. But I mean, I would be him. Do you remember Do you remember how he ate? Yes. Do you remember what he ate, what he took into his body? And the and speed he never in which he consumed it. His, and the speed in which he consumed it. And he was 13 pounds. Yep. He was 13 pounds with a four-inch waist. Mm-hmm. And yes. he'd go, 12-inch meatball parm every... 
chicken parm every day. Five minutes inhale. before the remote, I'm going to eat two submarine sandwiches now. Yeah, two subs. I would eat two subs, and he would inhale them, and he wouldn't exercise. No. And he, he was, you know, we called him, you know, uh, porn. Yeah. That was his nickname because he loved it so much. Yes. <laughs> So maybe that's how he. Maybe that, maybe that's how he burned up his calories. I, Mike, I don't think we he can't. Wow. All, we can't have everything. You are blessed. You're right. You are blessed. There with you the are. Wit, Intellect, the good, good looks. Mm-hmm. Well, no, and I and I also I don't like comedians that are like bodybuilders and uh, like Joe Piscopo you or know, Karen you, you Top. If or you Karen lost Tom, a lot of weight, you wouldn't be fine. Or Dane Cook. You know, guys that are thinking about being leading men instead of being comedians are. You know, come on. We yeah. just want you to lose some weight. Yeah, I want to lose a lot. I want to. I want to. Don't just, go. Don't go be too, a part of too skinny. No, I'm not going to go. I, I don't want to go. I would never do that. I'm never. I, I don't have the. I don't think I could ever do that. You so know? your target weight is what? Like 160. 175. That'd be, be great. Dream. Yeah. Dream scenario. Were you ever 175? Yes. When? Um, okay. Here it is. Second grade. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Michael Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned. Funny. We're not standing entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. Mother's Day. I'm so mad at my mother. Breathe it, Mama. Mother's Day. It's a well You got to have a mother for me. Mama. Mama. Christina, you haven't touched your lunch. <laughs> it's raw. It's rare. It's rare. Not raw. But it's got all this red juice when I push on it. Then don't push on it. Mother's Day. That's good, but you've got to push off more with your weight. Come on, let's see another one. Is that enough, John? But I'm tired, Mommy. Waiter. <laughs> Come on, Tina. <laughs> you lost again. It's not fair. You're bigger than I am. It's not fair. Twice. Ah, but nobody ever said that life was fair, Tina. I'm bigger and I'm faster. I will always beat you. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Rob Speedway, Oscar Santana. <laughs> and now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. Have I ever told you, Rob, what my favorite part of that mix that you edited is? No. You do an edit. With Alan Sherman, where you cut it after the Hello Mudda. So you it doesn't don't have do the, the full stanza, Hello Mudda, Hello Mudda. <laughs> that's what I love about that. Oh, it's that's like nice. It, that's your obsessiveness. That it's You're so true to the mother thing. <laughs> There's only one edit, I think, that you don't edit after mother, and that's mother-child reunion, yes. where you include the child. And I'm sure that was a, you just thought, well, it's going to, the rhythm of it will be better, but yeah. I forgot. But you know, I, I, tend to think, I tend to think back on maybe I tried it with the child being cut out of there. <laughs> and it didn't work, so I had to go Hello, back. Mudda, bam, bam, right into the end. Oh. <laughs> Uh, we are live from the heart of our nation's capital in the podcast village studios. That made me feel better about my weight for some reason. There you go. Uh, this Winner. is the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she's had enough, Joan. Uh, the Mike, Mike the steak show. is rare. <laughs> then Rob, Rob lip syncs to me. Then don't push on it. <laughs> it's my favorite line in the whole movie. <laughs> the Mike O'Mara Show is a radio show and podcast with a worldwide network of listeners who get it. If you're here, you are in the know. You can listen 24-7 on our new Play-A-Pod app. Uh, people raving about the Play-A-Pod app. Yes. We're still Woo! making improvements. Time-coded bookmarks, great media controls, customized settings, a sleep timer, and you can call the show anytime, anywhere. But let's be honest, you only call on Wednesday. Yes. Download it now on iTunes or at the Google Play Store. All items for our weekly mailbag can be sent to Rob with two Bs at MikeOmeraShow.com. And you can call us anytime, 888-920-4. That's 888-920-6673. The Mike O'Mara Show is on now. I'm a little sleep deprived. Yeah, punchy. Then don't. Push on it. It's got all this red <laughs> juice when you push on it. So don't push on it. 
bitch on wheels. <laughs> Man. If you ever want to see the one of the best comedies ever made mm. that wasn't intended to be seen, Mommy Dearest. Watch it on Thanksgiving like I do. Yeah, that's normal. Uh, our show today brought to you by Hymns. Here's the problem. 66% of men lose their hair by age 35. Mm-hmm. And by the time you notice, it's too late. Mm. True. Too late. Oh, my. Too late. Where's the music? Cue the music. The too late music. Row, row. <laughs> the solution? 4hims.com. 4hims.com is a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. And thanks to science, baldness can be optional. 4hims.com connects you with real doctors and medical-grade solutions to treat hair loss. These are real prescriptions backed by science, no nonsense, plus no waiting rooms, no awkward doctor visits. Just answer a few questions, the doctor reviews it, and the products are shipped directly to your door. It's that easy. Yep. I hate doctor's offices. You know that. I love 4hims.com. Uh, it's made it the easy way to get what you need to keep your beautiful hair. Remember, it's easier to keep the hair you have than to replace the hair you've lost. So act now. Order now. Our listeners get a trial month of hymns for just $5 today, right now, while supplies last. See the website for details. Uh, this would cost you hundreds if you went to a doctor or a pharmacy. Go to 4 slash TMOS. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S. Dot com slash TMOS. Don't wait. For hymns.com slash TMOS. And we thank you. Let's go, Caps. Yay! Let's go, Caps. I uh, made my way up to Tampa to uh, see some old fashioned conference final playoff hockey. And, uh, you know, uh, got a single ticket and went up and uh, saw my buddy Fried up there. What's and, the name uh, of the arena in Tampa? It is the uh, Amelie, A-M-A-L-I-E, Amelie, Amelie. Arena. Amelie. Hmm. Somebody look up Amelie because I didn't know is what that the where hell they was. Is they give a sermon there? No, but I mean, they, might be, be the related to, they might be related to Amway or something. Oh, like okay. That. Did, did Amway change? Uh, to, it's Amelie. Uh, Amway's, uh, that, that uh, That's arena Orlando. is in Orlando, yeah. Yeah. But well, pyramid, pyramid, pyramid scheme. Uh, Amelie. I don't know what Amelie is. We're looking at it right now. Yeah. yeah. They might be one of those companies that uh, you know control the world, but we don't hear about them. Like a and, Bond uh, villain? God, what a show they put on. I mean, I know that uh, we kicked their ass last night, uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning. All show, what, no go, Mike. Uh, <laughs> boy, oh, <laughs> boy, oh boy, what a show they put on. I think it's Big uh, Oil. Is it? Yeah, it looks like an oil company. Motor ah, oil. Ah, motor oil. Okay. Uh, Man, uh, it was spectacular. It was uh, just to be there, and the uh, I felt a little outnumbered. Playoffs. I'll be honest with my red shirt on. <laughs> playoffs. I felt, uh, uh, playoffs. What do you mean playoffs, <laughs> Mike? Uh, uh, yes. I, I read a story about the uh, Tampa and the Amelie Arena and how that organization, much like the Caps and and technology, is ruling the world now. Turn they, it up a little bit for me. Uh, yeah, you bet. They geofence. Oh. They geofence the um, the arena for ticket holders. To purchase playoff tickets, you have to be within the Tampa zip code to buy tickets to that game. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, it's very very. Did you notice blue. that? That seems I, to be noticed... bad business, though. No, there but... were there were plenty of. Uh, what there are you were plenty talking of... about? There's plenty of demand for playoff games. I suppose Why is I... that bad business? I, I just think People that you want to go anytime you're turning tickets. away, anytime you're turning away customers, it seems like bad. Well, business. they don't. They don't. That's the point. They, right. they have the captive they audience have the and they can get it. Okay. They can make the room all blue, which is really See, in pretty sports, much what they do. If you have a do. winning product and you're in the playoffs, you want to go to the games. Okay. And and what happens in real life if you have an asshole personality? Then what happens? Oh no. Do people buy tickets for that? Why are you turning on me? Because you turned on me. I just celebrated. Your weight loss. <laughs> now you're being a grumpy fat man. Oh, yeah. God. Well, I haven't lost the grumpy, just the fat. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Mike. You were, you were saying? Yes. Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so they they kind of control that, uh, and I really felt odd. Uh, and I wasn't wearing cap stuff. I was wearing a red. Uh, you know, T-shirt like I'm wearing right here, right? Because that's uh, it's Florida, mm-hmm. and that's yeah. all I wear, <laughs> and that allows you to expand too. That allows you to <laughs> turn into a lard ass manatee sort walrus. Sort of a, a plus and minus. A, uh... yeah, exactly. <laughs> These and golf shirts. Standard deviation with, with of heavy stretch fabric. <laughs> you are a bell shaped curve. Uh, so I felt odd. Number. I felt odd. I felt odd. I've not been to. A playoff game in another city where I'm rooting for the other team, right? And uh, and it was just it was unusual, 
and it was unusual. But I have to say that they uh, put on such a spectacular pregame show. It was magnificent. There were lasers. They gave us uh, little wristbands that were uh, LED wristbands cool. that were tied into a, a computer program so that the, the, the entire stand uh, stands were flashing. And, and so, if you anybody wore that's red. a regular sports fan and goes, yes. Yeah, don't, don't, the, don't the wristbands shock you? <laughs> If you yeah, yeah, that's right. I got a tiny little electric shock every time the caps would. Don't score. push on it. Uh, it was uh, and the the experience was uh, was electric boogie woogie woogie. Mm-hmm. But of course, um, I think the most demonstrative I was after a caps goal was yeah, like right towards the third period. I was yeah, that was it. I was not standing up and because uh, I just I didn't like the vibe. I didn't. Uh, it was not a hostile vibe because it's Tampa and it's chill Tampa. and and everybody's cool. Uh, Could you but, feel the energy yeah. leaving the room though? Oh, you know as, when they as talk the game about progressed. taking the other team out of it. Oh my goodness, great! It was uh, they 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 truly did that. And uh, and then um, afterwards, I made my way back and uh, realized that I'm an elderly man and night driving is. Not a fun thing. Oh, yeah. It's not what I enjoy. Uh, when when you're an elderly person and you're driving at night, you'll you'll be driving along at 70 miles an hour on 75, uh, which is the speed limit on Route 75 here in Florida, and you'll just be going mm-hmm. for no particular reason. Yep. You'll just go, hey, uh, yeah. is that a, mm-hmm. is that the curb? <laughs> Help me! <laughs> Help me! Uh, but it was uh, let's go, Cap. Two two to nothing. They go up in the series, and hockey is fun. And it was a hockey weekend with the Omeras. Yes, Oscar. End of the end of the first period when they were down two one. Right. Yes. Were you like? Uh, uh, I don't know. No, uh, I haven't. I, don't know. Uh, I haven't. Uh, like our buddy, our buddy Fried. I do not. Uh, who was nervous even when it was five to two? Uh, right. You know, he, I don't. I don't do that now. I have, I have, uh, Mr. Hobbs, I have so totally disciplined myself <laughs> against the feeling of dread being a Caps fan. I feel, I've told you that I felt differently about this team. I'm not getting happy, right? but I'm not getting as stressed as I used to. Whereas so I don't know the, what that means. I don't know what that means. In the past, your attitude would have been, you'll pardon the absence of a winning record. you pardon the absence of be- never beating Pittsburgh. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> now I... I just dig it, and uh, I really, really enjoy it. And I'm sure if uh, if they are fortunate enough to go on to the final, that that will be the true stress. Yeah. I have to be. I have to full disclosure. I have to tell you that uh, I find no malice towards the uh, the Tampa faithful. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, be because it's w- this is the state where I live, and this may be uh, the team that my son will want to root for as he grows up. It, a classy uh, it, it bunch. might be difficult. It's a uh, it's not I wouldn't call it classy because there's a <laughs> you know it is Tampa, right? <laughs> right. Yes. Uh but but I will say that in there and then uh, there was one fan directly in back of me. When you go in there not only do you get the wristband, but they give you a sign that says go bolts. Okay? Mm. And the go bolts sign I thought was a sign that everybody's going to going to uh, hold up. No, it is a foldable uh, fan-like clacker device that, that goes clack, 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 clack. You heard it if you were oh, watching yeah, yeah, the yeah. game uh-huh. on TV. Clack, 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 clack. And the uh, 600-pound man that came in and sat next to me uh, before the game even started immediately picked it up and expertly folded it into this clacker device uh, as though he has done it before. <laughs> And, uh, and and his lovely wife came in uh, right after him. She'll come into play a little bit later. Really? And uh, and so the, so the only reason I was able to feel a little malice yes. towards the Tampa fans was when it was capacity, when all the seats were filled. There was a man that had this, like, fan clacker. cardboard clacker device. Yeah. And they all clack them. Sure. And that's okay. They're loud, and that's, uh, that's to be expected. Yeah. The guy in back of me, directly in back of me, his clacker device was just touching oh, every oh time no. the crown of my head. Mm. The crown of my head, and I know he was doing it on purpose, but I'm not. I'm outnumbered. Yeah. Yes. I'm not going to make a scene. I, uh, now, when I sat back in my chair after sitting forward 
and I drove my skull into his cardboard clacker where he's got it six inches away from his Schwanstucker, mm. holding it between his legs in order for that to stab mm-hmm. me. Yes. That's when I turned around and he went, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. And you know when a guy goes, sorry, I'll show this. I have to do this visually okay. for the guys. Okay, Please. This is the expression. I'm, I'm like, he goes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You and the me. smile, yeah. the, the smile said, "Yeah, the guilty I'm, smile." I'm doing it. And then he still was just brushing the top of my hair with it. Every Maybe single he time. was hitting and on that's you. What, yeah. And when that happened, when the Capitals finally took the lead, that's when I went, "Yeah, yeah!" <laughs> you showed everyone. Was there was there anyone in your proximity that was a Caps fan to your knowledge that you could? Like, yeah, there was a family make eye contact in with? the row in front of me. A uh, mother with a Caps jersey. Okay. A little baby daughter with a Bolts jersey. Father with a Caps jersey. Older son with a Tampa jersey. And when the Capitals uh, scored, the mother was busting the chops. If it was a stepmother, she's really? an evil stepmother. <laughs> if it's a regular mother, that's not the way you treat your children. I, mean, you re- I understand there's a rivalry. This kid was like 12 or 13, and she went, ah! In your face. Like, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, know you, I know you have my team's jersey <laughs> on, lady, but you are a b a o c h Leave her alone. A- Yes. Hot soup. <laughs> no caps jerseys. Yeah. Aunt Lydia, you know, you might not want to pick on the kid like that. It's uh, you know, it's going to cause bad blood uh, yeah. when you do that. But at one point, uh, you know, these stadiums, and I talk about being a manatee walrus, and uh, with the bad hips, and up and down and up and down, and uh, there's a small, narrow area. And when I stood up to uh, to get my phone out at one point, right. the my little tiny rectangular key for my car fell on the, uh, the, the ground. The and fob. it was next to the lady who was uh, sitting. And for her to pick it up, she has to reach down like that and pick it up. For me, I have to go straight vertical. And I would have probably had to like support myself. It's the same right. reason I, the, these hips are not fully. And not I, say, I say, excuse me, excuse me. And I look over and then I say, excuse me? <laughs> and, she, and she turns around and she's like this. And she goes, oh, said, no. oh <laughs> excuse me, you see that? See that rectangular? You see that re- rectangular uh, key? Yes. What? What? I said, <laughs> do you see that rectangular key? I said, would you would you mind just picking that up for me? I, I that fell out of my pocket. She goes, what? <laughs> I said, the rectangular <laughs> key. Could you just get? And she goes, uh, and she she reaches, and it was probably six inches from her hand. And this is how, this is the effort she made to get it. She pushed her hand up, and, I, and then I, and then I said, uh, I pushed it over. It was on one of those fan clackers that yeah. hadn't been put together, and I slid it over her, and she grabs it and hands it to me. And I said, "Thank you so much." <laughs> and she, she looks at me, and she goes, and I find now I'm pissed. Right. I said, I said, "Thank you." A second time, and then I looked down. And I said, "Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> and she went, "Uh huh." Yeah, you know, the the universe. By the way, that's you know that's my peeve, right? With with anyone uh-huh. in anywhere, the uh huh. Yeah, and let me let me just explain to people that uh, may have been raised by ferrets <laughs> in a den in the middle of a landfill. <laughs> let me explain just this little breach of etiquette that okay. you can really you can start improving today. Yeah, if somebody says thank you, those two words, I give you thank, I give you mm. yeah. thank you. They are to be responded to with two other words. You're welcome. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Which is a contraction. Yeah. Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, welcome. You are welcome. Maybe it's three words, but you're welcome is the standard. And for anyone, anywhere, be someone holding a door for you, be someone in a service industry, uh, thank you gets you're welcome. Thank you doesn't get uh huh. Because <laughs> when you say uh huh, you might as well say "fuck you" to me. <laughs> okay, that's what I, I want to pass on. Uh huh is "f you" only in a different way. All right, when you say uh huh, that's not a response, especially people in the service industry, because you get thank you from a polite table. Yes, quite often. That's the way. That that works. I uh-huh. just wanted to pass that along. Uh huh. Uh-huh. 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 Thank you. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Would you have accepted? And... Not at all, my good man. <laughs> uh, you know what? <laughs> my pleasure is even 
better. Oh, I like my pleasure. I like that. You know where they That's, do it? <laughs> yeah. You know where the Manatee Walrus can tell you where they do it? Where? where? Yeah, Chick-fil-A. They do yeah. it all the time. <laughs> oh, my God. There we go. Pony and I know the same thing. That's good. Good tip, Those bastards ruined my Costco parking lot, and that is not my pleasure. It. My pleasure. I love it when I hear that. Yeah. My and pleasure. Like, I, yeah. I only started eating there recently because I want to gain the extra weight. Yeah. And uh, and so when they say my pleasure, I'm like, oh, they're pretty good. Hey, yeah, we, let's do a do playlist. Thank you for the extra Chick Fil A sauce. My pleasure. <laughs> and see. <laughs> ah, fast food. <laughs> Or chain restaurant. Yeah. Speaking of chains, chain restaurants, uh, it was uh, it was Mother's Day yesterday. Ooh. Yes, it was yeah, Mother's Day. Day. Mother's Day. We'll talk about that when we come back on the Mike O'Mara Show. <laughs> if you'd like to have your note read on the Mike O'Mara Show, Mike and the guys would love to hear from you. Send yes. your email to rob at mikeomarashow.com. That's Rob with two Bs. Or drop your card or letter into the mailbox addressed to the Mike O'Mara Show, P.O. Box 32101, Washington, D.C., 2007. They also like packages, too. And now back to the TMOS <laughs> Big Money Celebrity Match. Here's Mike. Thank you, Jim Amato. <laughs> you know, that I'm gonna awesome. if, if he's kicking it, Seamless. if he's kicking it back to me with Mike, here's Mike. I'm doing yeah. a thank you, Jim Amato. We have a lot of promo about. submitters. Take a page mm-hmm. from the Amato book. I like that. Oh, it makes Amato the show is tight. The, the gold standard. Yeah. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara show. Brought to you by Beachbody on Demand. The weather is getting hot, hot, hot. So you know beach time is almost here. So now more than ever, you need. Beachbody On Demand. Yes, I do. Yeah. Beachbody On Demand is a streaming service that gives you instant access to super effective workouts that you can do anywhere 24-7. This is the company behind P90X, Insanity, 21 Day Fix, T25, Brazil Butt Lift. Oh. Uh, they got all the good stuff. I love three-week uh, yoga retreat for flexibility. Phenomenal. Shannon's doing the Brazil Butt Lift. Ooh. And let me tell you. It's Pictures. All, it's all the exercises Podcast. that you would see, like, d- girls doing in the gym that are yeah. really in shape. And then you're like, oh, you can do them at home, but you have somebody telling you exactly what to do in the comfort of your home. So you don't have to drive anywhere. Yeah. You don't have to park anywhere. Hundreds of workouts for all fitness levels. Uh, use your computer, your smart TV, your tablet, your smartphone, Roku, Apple TV, Chromecast, and more. And the best part, TMOS listeners can try it absolutely free. I know that Oscar loves it. I really want to try this service because it will make you feel better. I promise. Please try this for me. Our listeners can get a special free trial membership when you text TMOS to 303030. That's access to this entire platform for free. All the workouts, the nutrition information, and more, uh, and support, totally free. Again, just text 303030. TMOS to 303030. That's all you do, and you will get that today. All right. Uh, Yesterday, a wonderful day. Uh, Mama uh, was down, and uh, we were very, very excited about it. And uh, Mother's Day special. Uh, Mother was visiting, and uh, Carla was excited. And we all went to a place that the, the girls wanted to go to. It's called First Watch. Do you have any of those Ooh, uh, in uh, Virginia? Watch. They make yeah. my smoke yeah. detectors. On ABC. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, this is a restaurant. Uh, oh. This is, uh, oh. is that what it's called? Is it First Watch? I think it's Yeah, called, I think it uh, is. Right? Uh, it's not U.S. Uh, egg? <laughs> <laughs> this is the question that I, that I asked you, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> this is my question. Which would you prefer in a restaurant? Because at this particular place, which had a line. Yes, it's an either gotta, or here. Okay, You got to work to get a line here. You gotta work. You know. What wow, you it must be really good then to get <laughs> right to get a line. You have to either wait till later, which yeah, we did, or you have to uh, go to the place where everybody thinks it's special. And, oh, yeah. they have a first watch in Fairfax and mm-hmm. Rockville yeah. and Laurel. Yeah. They got them everywhere. They're everywhere. Oh, I'd first like to go there after, places. after I take the racetrack the, at Laurel. They take it a mom and pop breakfast concept, and uh, and they're turning it into a chain. And, and what's it called? Ca- First Watch? Why would it be called? It sounds like a fire department. First it Watch. Says the Daytime Cafe. Yes. Yeah, it's fresh. Whatever that means. Like it's the Daytime yeah. Cafe. <laughs> well, and it's a little pricier than some of the other uh, breakfast places. Uh, like well, the mom and pops well, you might yeah, get. Well, yeah, with their gift card yeah. to spend $100. <laughs> yeah. God. For breakfast. I mean, that must be a pretty big They're flipping everywhere. omelet. everywhere. They have over 50 locations. Oh, my God. Yeah, they're everywhere. First watch. And they're down here. Yeah. First and, watch uh, your wallet. Am I right, ladies? So, which would you prefer? <laughs> would you prefer a 
non-smiling, bordering on malicious frown, or would you prefer <laughs> phony nice? Uh, because we got a little bit of both. There, I think this guy is the owner or the manager. Okay, and he is his countenance is so unpleasant that it it you just look at him and go, what? Who pissed him off? That's the way I look it's at it. It's a this tough dude. choice, but I'll weigh in first. I would take the phony niceness, and here's why. Okay. It means they're at least making an effort. I agree. To be to they're be pleasant. Trained. Now that you put it that trained. way, I, I agree. Although I, you know But I still would I hate don't it. like either. I don't like yeah. either. Now, before I say this, I have to uh acknowledge that anyone working in food service, and I was in that business uh for a short period of time with a failed restaurant. It is extraordinarily taxing. It yeah. is not fun. Is it easy to uh, do? It's probably easy to do. It's not easy to do well. And that's okay. why the people that do well are uh, on television and uh, are revered. Yes. And you see them uh, judging other people. You because they, yeah. they celebrate the people. That's exactly the right word with that. In this particular case, I think this may be the owner. And there is not a smiling server in there uh, when you see them leave the table. There is no sense of joy. And even the people coming to eat there, I feel as though, do you ever feel like you're there because that's where you think you should go? Yeah. Ah. And, uh, yeah. and my little son, my little four-year-old, wanted to go to our neighborhood joint. And I, uh, uh, that was vetoed. Denny's? And I th- I, uh, what's, <laughs> what is it? Uh, your neighborhood joint, Denny's? No. Oh. No, we have a little place. I'll give him a plug. Haney's. Do you, the, do you remember? Do you remember when I told the story about the old man uh, that that? Uh, oh that, yeah, the, the old and man the that took a little tumble, and I uh, was uh, I was helping him up, and I was kind of patting him on the back and telling him it was going to be okay. Yeah. And the manager of that joint walked out to me and said, "Your uh, entire breakfast for your family is comped. Thank you wow. for being so nice." Damn. I, I think I told that story. That's the local joint. Okay, this place has, uh, and I I have no idea whether they're not nice to people in the similar method, but. Uh, the similar way, but there was just. But a you saw scout. no when joy among friend, the staff. First no, watch. I don't like that. I don't like because it, wow. it means that people are being mean to each other. Yeah, I and, agree. Uh, and all of it had that uh, that coating of either phony niceness or meanness below the surface, and not necessarily meanness to the customers, meanness to maybe the staff that worked there. And food was fine, a little pricey, but it just made me uptight. I, Did I just you get the feeling that, that this might have been? Sort of an outlier because they were slammed for Mother's Day. Were they overtaxed? Is that I, why they were crabby? I don't know. I, I've been in there twice, and it's been that way both times. Okay, with this one guy. Also, right. this bad one guy. That, this is the guy who's just like wee, wee, like that. So I mean, you'll take the phony nice. You'll yeah, I, I would. If nice. given a choice, that's what I'd take. Thank you, thank you. Oh, great, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what are we bad, having though. today? Yeah, okay. thirteen. And then you know dollars? that she, you know, she walks away from the table and just goes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. tough it's business. some of the toughest work in the world yeah. to do that. And I have nothing but admiration for people that do it because it is tough. And I just, I maybe I shouldn't give a rat's ass. Maybe I'd be happier if I didn't observe people yeah. and I didn't care. Well, but you're when somebody a comes out, you know, yeah. you know exactly yes. what's going on. It's like, yeah, uh, but I'm sure people Mel- could tell stories about me being a dick, especially after my third vodka shot. You know, where it's just <laughs> like, you know, I used to come in. I remember Not when. You. Uh, I'll give you a, a little behind. Stop it, you. I remember well, How many in, shots before you started being fake nice to people? Uh, none. <laughs> yeah, that's really not in your playbook, is it? The no, turn. don't have the fake nice. Don't have the fake nice. <laughs> the have the ball busting. Yes, uh, that's now, there. You, and that's my way of saying I love you. Some people don't get it. Yeah. Uh, Jerks. But I, <laughs> what rubes? Don't they get you? <laughs> yeah. One redheaded slut, I'll be phony mean to you. <laughs> phony um, mean? <laughs> phony mean to you. So I have... Uh, because I was not an owner operator, because I, I was an owner in name only, and I but I frequented the joint because I wanted to see what was going on, and it was exciting for me to be part of this enterprise. I put up one thing, and on the back of the door, I put in large letters. I've told this story before. Hi, my name is blank. I'll be your server today. What can I start you with? I think it was something nice along yeah. those. Uh, yes, and it was in large letters because i wanted everyone to be greeted the same way much like pony says the my pleasure at uh, chick-fil-a yeah. yeah i wanted to have that kind of uh, we greeting. have we have a sign right outside the door when you walk into the, our tmos studio mm-hmm. it says remember jesus is our captain that's yes. right <laughs> only jesus yeah. mm-hmm. it's exactly only jesus 
So there were two things that happened. I used Reading. to think it was referring to Oscar's uncle. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. I was confused. But now we're all, good guy. we're all on the same page now. He's a good guy. So there are two things. There was that, the greeting. Yes. And then there was no gum chewing. I didn't want oh, gum yeah. chewing because yeah, I remember uh, that. if you get a chance to vacation in Manassas, <laughs> uh, you will notice that there is uh, The season probably... is coming, Mike. Hold on. I've got the statistics. Right yeah, vacation season in Manassas is coming, so book your hotels now. Here it mm-hmm. is. The rates is. are going to go sky high. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's still number one. I have the rankings yeah. of gum chewing uh, places in America. Manassas is still number mm. one. Hey, number one great. in the nation. That's mm-hmm. really good. awesome? Yeah. Most gum chewed by most people, by fewest people. That's wow. Way, so it's a per capita it thing. <laughs> yeah, per capita. Uh, Those are sticky. <laughs> so I had a thing about it. I said, when you're on the floor, uh, there might have been a third one, and that was no smoking out in front of the mm-hmm. building. Okay. Which is another Valid. which is another go to for the service. It always, you know, so that was it. That was my big three. And uh, we had a meeting that day uh, where my manager said, why don't you come in and, uh, you know, just to give him a nice talk? And I was funny, and I said, now, I only have, I, 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 I'll be seeing a lot of you. I look forward to this. It's going to be great. I got my two things. The greeting that we put on the door is really, really important. I, I hope we can do that. And, of course, no gum chewing. And, uh, and that was it. And then it was probably a week later that I was bringing family into the restaurant, my restaurant, mm-hmm. my name on it. I America. could not have been more excited, more thrilled. And I went back to the office, took care of a little business. And then I came out and I sat down. And on the back of the door, I said, hi, my name is blank. I'll be your server today. What can I start you off with? Simple, simple little yeah. greeting. And, uh, and I, was, I was talking. I was actually having that discussion before we uh, had our server come out. And, uh, and oh. about two minutes later, about two minutes more than it should have been, uh, the server came out, walked up to our table. I'm getting kind of excited. And she comes up and she's chewing gum. And she says, how you guys doing? Oh. And, I, and I was just like, you know, it was, uh, it was just. After you had set the table for, here's what's going to happen. Yeah, it was like, <gasps> yes, yes, she didn't care. Thank you. Thank you Randolph very much. Scott. Was, uh, Randolph <laughs> Scott. Randolph Scott. Randolph How you guys doing? <gasps> Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you're fired. No, I didn't do that. I said, give me a drink, and that was it. And then we, we, we moved on. That's the way it was. But, uh, it's been a really, yeah. really messed I just, up I don't like the scowl. Uh, the scowl yeah. doesn't work for me. You know? Yeah. And, and, this, and if, you're that on, if, if you're being mean to your people that are working for you, it means you're not happy. So just, you know, I like the, uh, the fun environment. Yeah. I was at a drive through uh, you know, pumping up my my massive stomach uh, last week, and I heard one of the ladies at the window. You know yeah. what she said? What she said? You know, I love you, and uh, and I heard Aww. I love I love you too. And I looked at my wife. I said, "That's that's that those people rock." Yeah, and, that's uh, awesome. And they were that's how they were getting through their day, where it's not fun to, to do that. We're just gonna kill these bad white guys. <laughs> Let's keep doing our job. How do you, do you know that they they might not have been uh, Mike? Drink- like, I know people that are throwing love around aren't El Diablo Blanco. Like, you guys aren't comfortable saying that on a regular basis. Maybe you're basis. right. Maybe you're absolutely right. That's why, that's why I'm switching my doctor. Yeah. Uh, well, seriously. So you get I, some love? I am changing doctors. I am changing a doctor. My doctor's first name is Julio. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because everybody in his office is like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Okay? Put that in your bigoted pipe and smoke it. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm yes. not kidding you. I'm not kidding. You want to talk about people that care? It was the best office I've ever been to. I said, okay, I want more of this. And uh, I said, well, you know, he does take an occasional, he's a specialist, but he does take a few uh, patients. Ooh. <laughs> Julio, me and Julio down by the schoolyard. Uh, anyway, <laughs> hasn't gotten back to me yet, though. He will. He will. Yeah. Fat right. Irishman. You're on the lista. You know. <laughs> he might take, take you in my, on the installment plan. <laughs> We Short will term take stuff. a break <laughs> and, uh, and come back. I want to clear people's minds about whether I'm murdering my dog or not. Okay, we'll right please. Back. Shalom, my homies. Intern Emily here. If you haven't heard, I'm shipping off to Israel for the next month. I'll be climbing mountains, trekking through the desert, and even floating in the Dead Sea. But whatever will I do with my downtime? Luckily, TMOS is now available on Spotify. It's easier than ever to listen wherever and whenever you want. And the best part, it's free. So check out The Mike O'Mara Show on Spotify. Tov, yalla, bye. Tov, yalla. So Good. yeah, we got the intern Emily. She's going up to the She's going to have a good time. She's going to go see the Wailing Got her diploma this West weekend. Point. Congratulations, Emily. Oh, way Cloud to go, Emily. You graduated, graduated from the American Woo! University. Way to go. Welcome back to The Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Texture. Are you paying attention, not to this podcast, but to everything you need to? 
If you're like me, you rely on magazines for all the latest ideas and trending topics, and you can get all the magazines that matter with texture. I was reading an article about Raymond Floyd because I love golf and yeah. I like to read about golf. He's still around? And it's, uh, he's still around, and he tells the little stories about everything in golf. I love to read the Good stories from the old guys. Texture is the app that offers over 200 top magazines all in one place with Texture. You get complete issues and even back issues for titles like Time, The Atlantic, and The New Yorker all in one app. If you want something lighter, you have People, Cosmo, and Entertainment Weekly. Texture delivers the best of both worlds with newsworthy stories and relaxing entertainment anytime, anywhere. Magazines are where you find quality journalism, beautiful photos, in-depth interviews, and perspectives that show you all sides of the story. Dive deep into the issues you care about today with Texture. Texture is usually $9.99 per month, but they are giving listeners a free trial to start your seven-day free trial. Go to texture.com slash TMOS. Go to texture.com slash TMOS to start reading the latest issues for your favorite magazines today. That's texture.com slash TMOS. Okay, I want to make something very clear to our uh, listening audience. Uh, We made some jokes about beluga and flying and uh, there are two things you should know. As it stands now, Beluga is going to be in his little Sherpa bag on wheels. We test drove it with him, and uh, he was sitting up in it. And so I went into the bedroom, and Carla had put him in it to test it. Mm-hmm. And there was this bulge coming out of the top of it. And I said, well, he doesn't fit in there. And she said, he's sitting up. I said, of course he's sitting up because he's a, it's a carrier that's designed to have the dog lie down. And that's why he's and sitting up. And nine times out of ten, that dog, that dog lies down, right? That's not that's a sit-up dog. Yeah. I he's always be been very, a. Yeah, I have what, to be what, careful. Well, what's going on? I have to be careful because I'm I'm sleep deprived, and if I get going on this, okay. I want to I want to go in the complete other direction. The inner monologue, right? Yes, the inner monologue. Okay, the but inner government. He, he he fits in it, and I wanted to tell people that are concerned about Beluga that I'm not. We're not going to drug him, and he's not going to be flying in the bottom of the plane. He's Good. Gonna be up in the cabin with us. At least that's what Carla found out when she talked to the airline, that everything's going to be fine. Good. So he's going to be okay. And uh, Are you and flying Braniff? Uh, yeah, we're, we're flying uh, Eastern. Oh, good. That's a good we're airline. Eastern Airlines, <laughs> and uh, he's going to... So we've got his carrier, and it's the size where you can take him you know, through. You have to take him out when you go through security. Does you he know, have to walk through the metal detector? <laughs> uh, well, the, the one time that we put him uh, through the, um, you know, the, the metal detector, uh, the TSA guy said, you're not allowed to bring a black loaf of bread on this plane. Because I, I, I can't help myself. I'm I was sorry. envisioning Beluga in the thing with his paws up over his head while the thing spins around. <laughs> like this cross, yes. cross paws. Cross paws. Yeah. He can't yeah. get his paws no, above his head. Yeah. Yeah. Just, 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 do, you, do you have any, uh, is there anything metal in your pocket? I've got some small change. <laughs> yeah, suddenly uh, Beluga's turned into William Conrad. No, he'll have a... Uh, I want to shit in this bag. Well, Luke is the type of dog that would have like three Sacagaweas in his pocket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> out of out of and a fifty cent piece. Yeah. Really outmoded money. <laughs> Here you go. How about a little something for the effort? Or so? <laughs> yeah. I don't even have a slot for this in my drawer, Bug sir. Beluga. And then his monocle would fall out, fall out of some fold or two. In my uh, mind's so, eye, yes. I know how big a carry-on has to be, and I know how big Beluga is. It's probably a pretty snug fit in the carrier. It's a little snug. It's not yeah. like Frankie who can, you know, have a dinner party in there. It's yeah. Blue, but, but we're not drugging him. Good. And we are we are carrying him in the cockpit. And I believe if there's a problem with that, we may not, you know, it might screw the trip up. But I'm, I'm leaving that to Mrs. O'Mara. Is it a nonstop uh, from Florida to Maine? No. Because no, I'm curious, what is the protocol for if the dog has to go? It could uh, happen. I think he has to go in the suit, just like in the right stuff. <laughs> Request permission to relieve bladder. Oh, I wasn't thinking about uh, his bladder. That's all I tell him he can go in the suit. That's the right stuff. One of my favorite scenes in the right stuff where uh, Scott Glenn has to pee. That's right. It's a uh, wonderful. So uh, there has been some concern online with uh, the helpers. <laughs> uh, that uh, that that he would be that right. he would be murdering our dog. That, that, that I listen. I do a lot of shtick about uh, the dog, but this is an animal uh, whose uh, excrement I pick up twice daily. Yes. So I can bitch, but I don't treat our our dogs badly. I treat our dogs extremely well. And 
because he's older, Carla wants to take him up north, and I understand that completely. And so he will be riding in the, the cockpit with us, and uh, we will be wheeling him through the airport until we get to TSA, and then, uh, you know, he'll be checked out at that point. Do you think he'll be making the trip back down south at the end of the summer? That's, that's see. I don't want to do that. I, it's getting too close. It's, well, it's not too funny, close. Pony. Stop every it. time mm. I get crap, every time we talk about the dog, because Carla, you know, hears that, and I yeah. Make do you sure take all his fun. toys with them, or do you bother keeping any back? No, no Beluga is not a toy animal. Oh. If you have a, you know, if you have uh, a chicken leg, that's his toy. I mean, he. <laughs> He wants food. Uh, it's the other one that likes. Uh, Frankie likes a toy. Frankie's got a tiny little stuffed <laughs> tiger that I throw, oh. and I'm really working on my relationship with Frankie, trying to get it better. And he has taken to jumping up on my lap occasionally just to get some love. So there, there we are. Linus we got, got a new toy this weekend. Oh, what did he get? His mo- my mother brought him. His grandmother uh, brought him a baseball. Ooh. And it turns a real, out a real baseball. Yeah, because I bought one for my mom's dog because my mom has a Cal Ripken home run ball. Mm-hmm. And the dog saw it. It's on a shelf. And the dog, her dog Lulu, started just looking at it and like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> like he wants you to throw it. Yeah, but mm-hmm. you can't play with a Cal Ripken ball. So I bought so my you, mom a, a baseball for the dog. A real baseball. Yeah, leather with the cork core and everything. And it's oh wow. And the dog loves it because leather it, with the core, like the same <laughs> one that Robert Redford hit in the natural. Exactly. And when he where plays he with the cover <laughs> off the ball, the the uh, she's been chewing on it a whole bunch and getting the threads out. So it's a good. Workout for a tea. So Linus, like a little Darren McGavin from the Natural. Oh, I would. Uh, this is Darren McGavin. Uh, it's time for. Uh, let me let me hit the ding. It's time for obscure impression corner here. This is uh, Darren McGavin uh, addressing uh, Kim Basinger or Bassinger or yeah. Bassinger uh, when she's, she's the talking to tall. Robert. Uh, when she's talking to Robert Redford on the phone. Right? Okay, <clears throat> please. Darren McGavin as uh, the gambler. Talking to Kim Basinger. I forgot what his character's name is, but I remember the voice. All right? Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. This is him after she gets off. Okay, Mike, is, so you know he's fixing his hair, and I bet he's about to turn away from the microphone, so when he turns her back around, he'll be in character. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. It's a tough one. It is. Hey, you are in control, aren't you, pal? Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, now, do you remember here's the scene? Why, yeah, and here's why that's scene. so great is yeah. because when you do that, you know it's accurate because it could be done by the father in a Christmas story, also played by him, but a totally yeah. different character. You've but I it. ruined the guy. Like, <laughs> the, uh, that is the Darren, the natural. If if you're a connoisseur of Darren McGavin, like I am, and by the way, Darren McGavin, for those of you who might not know, is the dad in a Christmas story. Also, okay? call check the Night Stalker. Shut up. <laughs> Fuck your sis. All right. Darren McGavin is what? absolutely an icon to me. He oh, is he's one a of the perfect guys. character yeah. actor. Perfect. Yeah, but I ruined the guy. <laughs> he got 10 bucks. Ruined. And the silver. Yeah. Those two of the greatest character actors in the history. You've yes. got Robert Prosky and Darren McGavin yeah. in the same movie. Mm-hmm. They were whoever casted The Natural. And you've got Wilford Brimley, Brimley? as the manager. Yeah, that's right. And you got that old guy with the mustache who's the assistant coach. I should know his that name. Movie is, yeah, it's that perfect. movie is Glenn is Close, too. She's great. Her, mm-hmm. Glenn Close is fantastic. It's before she went total crazy. Uh, was, that, <laughs> by the way, was, was that Glenn Close pre- uh, Michael Douglas or Fatal post Michael Douglas? Oh, I think that was, was that pre, pre I think it was pre Fatal Attraction, but I think it was post Big Chill. You are in control, aren't you, pal? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Darren McGavin, <laughs> all fresh fruit from Jim and Charlie. <laughs> uh, anyway, I love the natural. <laughs> I, I don't know the name of the restaurant where he gets a, all fresh food. Yeah, you know? and Robert Redford is just being Robert Redford. Yeah, and he's movie. he's just always just a little too old for every scene he's in, especially right. when and, he's playing young. Well, he's playing. No, he's playing old. He's playing. Yeah, a, playing but, old, but old, when he's when they do the flashback and it's shot through like a mile of fabric so he looks young. <laughs> like, can we get a little more key light on him, please? Yeah, he was great in that movie. Was it, such a good was movie. it uh, Red Blow, Richard Farnsworth? That's it. The Richard was, Farnsworth. Yeah. Richard Farnsworth, exactly. Richard good Farnsworth, pull. yeah. Yep, and it eats good, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know how to little... say it, but it sure do eat good. <laughs> and they're singing the songs to each other yep. on the bench, you know? I would have bet money you didn't know that song. I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I, I do. Three hours of sleep is, is what's great. wrong with you. <laughs> Three hours of sleep. But and the, you uh, love Beluga. Yeah. yeah. I do. No, I just want people to know that I'm not going to hurt the dog. No. Uh-uh. I, uh, I'm not going to. Was uh, there a lot? The there was an uproar, I guess. 
Uh, there's just a little concern uh, from a one blip of our on the more radar. prominent listeners who started a thread about it, and I felt like uh, addressing it. Okay, so are you happy now, Trip? <laughs> uh, but anyway, that, uh, just wanted to make does Darren sure McGavin have any words for Trip? Yeah. You are in control with those Toll House cookies, <laughs> aren't you, pal? I did see a Deadpool. <laughs> How about all right? You know what? Trip is going to absolutely love this. I will be Darren McGavin addressing Trip Affleck, one of our P1 listeners, a guy that supports the show more than anyone else. All right. All right. So these will be comments Darren McGavin makes to. Oh my God, we are tailoring the show for one particular. Narrow casting. Right it's what right. we do best. All right. You aren't gonna eat all that bacon yourself, are you, pal? <laughs> Darren McGavin. <Yeah>. Show <laughs> she Affleck. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. All fresh food from Trip and All fresh food from Trip and Affleck. There you go. Yeah. You don't understand. Are you going to eat all that? You don't understand, Trip. I already have. Uh, that's when he's saying he's going to bet again. You see, Mr. Time. McGavin, what I do is I slice the fruitcake and freeze the slices individually and yeah. enjoy them throughout the year. Yeah. Now you are in control, aren't you, pal? I'm in control of the fruitcake. Now I'll slip, flip over to a Christmas story talking okay, okay. to Trip, all right? All right. We are going to Trip Affleck to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what is wrong with me today. We're going to change the tire. <laughs> Shut up! Fuck you, Affleck! <laughs> it's a major Affleck award. <laughs> Fragile. Oh, God, you're killing me. All right, there you go. That's for one guy. I'm doing a show oh, for one guy I right think now. it's for more than one guy. Yeah. Hey, Gus. Gus was the guy's name. His name was Gus. Yep. I forgot what his last name was, but his first name was Gus. And now uh, and now the judge, played by Robert Prosky, will yeah. address uh, okay. Trip, Trip Affleck. Right? You'll pardon the absence of light in your kitchen. Excuse me, Mr. Affleck. I thought we had an agreement. Uh, anyway, that's it. I'm, I'm done. I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, I just uh, want to say... You'll pardon uh, the absence of chocolate chips in these cookies. You'll pardon. Uh, by the way, uh, not, that I, not that I live by that man's post, but uh, no. the Toll House cookies with the white chocolate, I believe the peanut butter and the regular chocolate morsels uh, looked absolutely... And he was complaining about the fact that he... The recipe yielded fewer cookies. No, he wasn't complaining. He was saying he was okay with that. I wonder if that I had total, anything to do. I'm Mike. a total loser on the weekend. That is all the stuff that I look at. No, you went that to a pro hockey me. playoff game. Yeah, you're not a loser. You, and also, if you're worried about the amount of cookies that the batter makes, sometimes the problem is the amount of batter consumed pre baking. Ooh, oh, yeah. 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 Because you got to make sure uh, it tastes right. Do you make great cookies? I do. Could you make, you make some homemade? For the show? You, what would you like? You, Oh, something scrumptious. You know what I make that are excellent? They're Crown Royal cookies. Oh, I've never had that. Before. Oh, they're great. Mm. Mm. Really? Yeah. yeah. Mike, you know what? You know I had I had one of Rob's uh I had one of Rob's uh Crown Royal oh. cookies. Let's let's go back to that. Oh, right good. Now, okay. This is one of Rob's Crown Royal cookies, and we'll take you to the scene where I'm eating it. No. Oh. Right, This is really, really delicious. <laughs> oh, no, 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 <laughs> and Mike, remember what I said. <laughs> yeah. Give Beluga half of one Crown Royal cookie before the mm -hmm. flight, but only That's a right. half. Yep. Only and a then, half. Uh, and then he'll look at me and say, uh, you are in control, aren't you, pal? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry. That is a segment of the program I cannot get back. There are people that will love it, and there yes. are people that will hate it. I think right? they'll love it more yeah. than they hate it's it. It's like blue much. cheese. It's very divisive. Very good. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll take a... Uh, hey, we're rooting for Mike to get three hours of sleep every show. Yeah. Three hours of sleep, aren't you, pal? Are yeah. you in control, Mike? Are you in control? You are in control, aren't you, pal? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we'll take a break, and uh, we'll be back with news you may not need right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. It's Wednesday, May 9th, 2018. If you're listening Surreal. to the, the regular Mike O'Mara Show, to the, to if the, you already have a subscription already. to the bonus show, you don't have to listen <laughs> but if you don't have a subscription, that's terrible. 
it's not looking good for you. <laughs> you need to download the bonus show, pay some money, and we need a lot of you and your friends to sign up. Pay a little money to support Mike, Rob, and Oscar. Don't be terrible. Sign up now. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Whistle. We all have dogs. We were yes. just talking about our dogs. Uh, Rob's got a dog that's, uh, you know, mobile and uh, runs around a bit. He bolts. Uh, you love Whistle. I love uh, it because I can. I know where he's headed. He's got, like, several spots, but mm-hmm. I just have to look at my phone, open the app, and I'll say, oh, he's at the mailboxes over on Tennessee Avenue. And I show up, and he looks at me like, oh, you're here, too? Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's easy. It makes it easy Surprise. to find your dog. Yeah. Whistle is a device that attaches to your pet's collar that allows you to track their location and activity from an app right on your phone. Whistle is lightweight, waterproof, and it has a rechargeable battery that lasts up to 10 days. Whistle uses GPS and AT&T's cellular network to monitor your pet 24-7 anywhere in the USA. You can even use Wi-Fi zones to monitor your pet and uh, get notified. Monitor, sorry, that's three syllables. Uh, <laughs> and get notified when they leave and return to uh, the safe place. Yep. When your pet is beyond Wi-Fi range, Whistle can track your pet anywhere in the U.S. using AT&T's cellular network. Microchipping and tags are important for pet safety, but Whistle lets you find your dog before he's lost. Find your pet in minutes and rest easy thanks to Whistle, Oscar Santana. Uh, it's funny we even had the spot today because uh, we have Whistle on, on Santos. Sure. And at my mom's for Mother's Day, we take him over. and She's got a big yard. And in her yard, there are blind spots. Right, right. So instead, you can't of, see instead the dog. of having to get up every time, be like, I hope he didn't escape the yard. Yeah, we right. just looked at the phone. It's it was so great, so, it's so easy. Great. Uh, Whistle brings peace of mind to pet owners across the nation, and for a limited time, our listeners can get twenty five dollars off a Whistle device when you use the code TMOS. So go to Whistle dot com right now and use the code TMOS at checkout. Visit Whistle dot com today. Whistle, the smarter way to care for your best friend. News. News. Yeah. Uh, the Social Security Administration just released, you are in control, <laughs> aren't you, pal? Uh, just released data on the most popular baby names. Oh, I love last this. Last year. And, uh, well, they don't look that different than they did in 2016 or 2015 or okay. 2014 or or 13 or two. Well, there's several heavy hitters that always stay towards the top. Or the 10 most popular names for girls in 2017 were yes Emma mm-hmm. Olivia okay Ava EVA or AVA Isabella oh Isabella's a pretty name Sophia mm-hmm. there you go Mia Amelia Charlotte Charlotte <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn and Abigail why so many names that end in a vowel, do you suppose? I don't know. Are you in control? You are in control, <laughs> aren't you, pal? Uh, Emma was the most popular name for the fourth year in a row, and it's been in the top three for a decade straight now. Olivia was second for the fourth year in a row. For boys, the top ten names last year were Liam at number one, Noah, William, James, Logan, Benjamin, Mason, that's a surprise, Elijah, Oliver, mm. and Jacob. A lot of biblical names. Very much so. But don't you think uh, Liam and William should be considered the same name? Yeah, because it's uh, Gaelic for, yeah. Liam, ah. yeah. for, for William. Because uh, that the would first allow time, Robert to move up one. <laughs> uh, that's the first time Liam was the number one name. Uh, it's been the second most popular for the last three years. Noah dropped from the most popular to the second most popular. Uh, and by the way, when I hear Noah, I still think of Bill Cosby. What's a cubit? Is, yeah, <laughs> sad. It is. Uh, it the is. names that uh, had the biggest jumps in popularity last year for girls were Ensley, Ensley, yeah. and Oakland. O uh, O A K L Y N N. And for boys, they were Wells and Cairo. These are stupid oh, names. Cairo Ren. Also, uh, for the also the girl's name Melania. Had oh. the fifth biggest jump last year. Nice. Ooh. Coming in at number 12 for the boys, yeah. BB-8. Okay. Isn't that great? Isn't the that other great? name with two Bs. Uh, uh, n- <laughs> now that NBC has <laughs> unveiled their schedule for next season, here's the uh, full breakdown of the shows they canceled. 
The Brave. Anyone? The Brave. No, anybody watch the Brave? Out. Uh, the Carmichael Show. Anybody watch no, the Carmichael nope. Show? Anyway, Great News. Anybody watch Great News? I no, watched that anyone? a few episodes because there's some good people in the cast, but it was a horrible show. Uh, the Night Shift. Anybody watch The Night Shift? Oh, no, anyone? but I'd like to go anyone? back. <laughs> uh, Rise. Anybody watch Rise? Oh, I watched anybody? one episode of Rise. It was about a bakery? <laughs> <laughs> Taken. Was that the uh, Liam Neeson movie? Yeah, based not on a good Liam adaptation. Neeson? Yeah, probably okay. not. Uh, a final season of Shades of Blue airs this summer. Uh, that's uh, Jennifer Lopez's show. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Didn't work uh, out. The shows they are going, uh, that they are bringing back include America's Got Talent, AP Bio. Good. Uh, just jump in here. I don't watch any of them. The Black AP Bio, List. AP Bio, I watch. It's funny. Uh, it's Patton funny. is in it. He plays the uh, yes. principal in it. Uh, that I wanted. I've been meaning to watch that. Yeah. Good. Uh, the Blacklist, Blind Spot, yes. Chicago Fire. My girl uh, loves that. A bunch of dudes with their shirts off. Mm. Chicago Med, Chicago PD, Chicago. You are in control, aren't you, pal? <laughs> Too many Chicago <laughs> shows. Dateline NBC. That's oh, coming well, back. That'll, that'll last forever. Cheapest show ever. Of course. That, let me see. Oh, I'm the, Lester uh, people, Holt. Cashing a the check. People, the people at Dateline NBC said uh, Dateline NBC will run as long as Carla is alive. Uh, <laughs> it's true. Ellen's Game of Games. Another cheap show. Good Girls. That's oh, I watched that. What is Good Girls? <laughs> Three moms that uh, turn to the other side of the law to make money. They're oh, more, I saw the previews for it. Yeah, okay, yeah. Good. They're more The Good Place, Hollywood Game Night, Law and Order, Special Victims Unit, Midnight, Texas. The Good Place Anyone? is really good. Midnight, Texas? That dancing. Superstore. Did anybody watch Superstore? I watch it every week. Is I just great? want it to be a little better. Robert okay. loves it, but there's some really funny people in it. Uh, Mark McKinney from Kids in the Hall is great. This is us. Oh. What? You know, I, I think ahead. the bloom Go is ahead. off the rose on that. I really what do. What would the rose be? The rose would be Miss Metz. Okay, The Voice, The Wall. Yeah! Will and Grace <laughs> and World of Dance. Uh, this will be uh, Law & Order SVU's 20th season, tying it with the two long longest reigning dramas, Law & Order Regular and Gunsmoke. That's a World of Dance. There. I love that people show. are still referencing Gunsmoke, worst show ever. A Western uh, that wasn't even a Western. It ran forever. Would, it was a video game. Yeah. Would you like to know the shows that are on the bubble? Yes. NBC is still undecided. <laughs> <laughs> is still undecided on Better Late Than Never, Champions, Genius Junior, Law & Order, True Crime, Little Big Shots, Spartan, an ultimate team challenge, and for the second year in a row, Timeless. Those are the ones that are on the bottom. All those reality shows will make it because they're cheap. Little big shots, though. Steve Harvey, first time I've seen him almost lose. Oh, he'll win. He'll win. And also the other one, uh, what's the one? Is it Genius Junior? Uh, that's yeah, hosted Genius by uh, Doogie Howser, and that's a pretty Ooh. good show. I like that. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Oprah gave the commencement speech, uh, speech at uh, USC's Annenberg School of Communication and Journalism on Friday, and of course she nailed it. Here are some of her best quotes. I'm working together to get things done. Quote, you can't personally stop anyone from walking into a school with an assault rifle, nor can you single-handedly ensure that the rights that your mothers and your grandmothers fought for so hard for will be preserved for the daughters that you may someday have. Quote, it will take more than you alone to pull more than 40 million Americans out of poverty, but who will you be if you don't care enough to try? And what mountains could we move? What gridlock could we eradicate if we were to join forces and work together in service of something greater than ourselves? On the perils of the Internet, she says, quote, Everything around us, including and in particular the Internet and social media, is now being used to erode trust in our institutions, interfere in our elections, and wreak havoc on our infrastructure. Oh, that my is from, God. Uh, Potential presidential candidate Damn. Oprah Winfrey. That is so awesome. And meanwhile, at VCU, the commencement uh, speaker was Adrian Garcia. Oh. <laughs> he was so, great. He was great. He was great. You know, a little late. Party at my house, guys. Hey, you want to go down to the fan, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> the fan. Uh, according to a new survey, a quarter of parents say they change parts of those classic stories when they tell them to their kids because they're too scary that they send a bad message or that they're not politically correct. <laughs> Here are the fairy tales. I've never overthought it like that. Me neither. Here are the, the fairy tales that they're most likely to change. Uh, number five, they basically avoid telling the ugly duckling story because it promotes body shaming and bullying. Ooh. I don't know who these parents are. Number four, Hansel and Gretel. Hansel? Gretel? Gretel. <laughs> uh, they don't get abandoned in the woods and they don't kill the witch to escape. What's Boo! the point of the story? Boo! Uh, Oscar, at number three, the gingerbread man 
doesn't get eaten at the end. That's what, what parents. <laughs> <That's laughs> what Anything about your garments? <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy or Not sad about that? Button. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, in the Three Little Pigs, they don't trick the wolf into going down a chimney into a boiling pot. He just apologizes and they let him go. Oh, God. Oh, I can't and tell number, you how upsetting this is. At number, uh, at number one, uh, Little Red Riding Hood, the wolf doesn't eat the grandma, and instead of killing him, he and Red Riding Hood become friends at the end. Oh, I've seen a rendition of that on some adult sites. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Tell you. <laughs> yeah. None yeah. of these beat friends. the story that I told Julia when Look she was little. Look at the Sean sticker on that wolf. What? <laughs> None of these beat the story that I told Julia when she was little, which what is that, that Wayne Newton lived under her bed. <laughs> I may have been drinking. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> You're going to see a scary monster. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. Are you telling me that the phrase Happy Meal is false advertising? Is what? that what you're saying? What? Apparently, eating fast food puts you in a bad mood. Come on! Come on, and the wolf is friends with Red Riding Hood. At least according to an author, Rachel Kelly, who wrote a new book called Kelly. The Happiness Diet. Hi, Rachel. It's The Happiness Diet. Kelly. <laughs> uh, she says that it's because of all the trans fats in fast food, especially the fries. Uh, they mess with all levels of omega-3 fatty acids in your body, which can lead you to being pessimistic, aggressive, and depressed. Mm. Oh. Mm. Uh, and fast My food pleasure. Isn't- uh, and fast food isn't the only food that she says will bum you out. Basically, everything that tastes good will. Some of the other foods that she says will put you in a bad mood are diet soda, sugary cereal, prepackaged donuts, shortening and margarine, salty margarine, uh, salty snacks, and canned food. That's uh, nonsense. You know what she uh, is? She's conjuring. Yeah, she can just, step off. Just die now, all right, pal? <laughs> pal? Yeah, you are in control. All right, Logan Novasconi, a little something something for oh, you yes. right now. Logan Novasconi was buying a Coke at a gas station in Red Banks, Mississippi last Wednesday. He looks like he's in his 20s or early 30s. Okay. Another customer was yelling at the employees about some peach cobbler that he had bought. Uh, the guy was angry because his peach cobbler didn't have enough peaches in it. And he was swearing at the female employees and being pretty nasty. So our friend Logan stepped in and told him not to talk to them like that. And the guy responded by grabbing a gun out of his car and firing seven shots at Logan. Wow. One of the bullets hit him in the back, but it must have just grazed him because he was back at the gas station talking to a reporter the next day. (laughs) (laughs) He says he can't believe someone would go that far over some lousy peaches. But if he had to do it all over again, he'd still stand up for the women who were being yelled at. Brave, brave Mm. Logan. Uh, Meanwhile, the guy who shot him is named... Stanley Woodson. (laughs) And uh, Stanley looks like he's in his 50s. He's in custody, facing charges for attempted murder. And he will also be extradited uh, extradited to Florida uh, because that's where he belongs. (laughs) Thank you very much. That's it. That's all I got for you today. Back home. Yeah. Yeah. Come down. Come to where we are. Fire some seven shots at somebody over Peaches. Yep. You belong here. (laughs) Right here in my town. It's the Uh, heat. We'll take a break. (laughs) It is the heat. It's the heat. The sun. Party never ends. Uh, we'll take a break and come back with the audio vault and Rob Spiewak. Uh, you, you do have an audio vault for us, don't you, pal? I'm in control. Yeah, uh, very good. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> It's Political Persuasions. Hey, it's Chris Freitz with Political Persuasions. This week, Mike and I talk about Trump bringing home the Americans held captive by North Korea. Congressional polls, they are a tightening. And bomb, 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 Iran is back on the charts. You can download Political Persuasions at politicalpersuasions.com, iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever fine podcasts are found. Just remember this about Political Persuasions. Even if the world's coming apart at the seams, we'll keep it light. (laughs) Uh, Welcome back to the uh, Mike O'Mara Show, uh, brought to you by Yoko CO. Do you ever wonder when you're going to die? Hmm? Hopefully, it'll be years from now, decades even, but it might not be. It could be next week, maybe even tomorrow. Sorry for the heaviness. Oh, no. The point is, you don't want to waste precious hours of your life doing paperwork or sitting in traffic or, God forbid, trying to update your organization's website. Mm -hmm. Well, at Yoko CO, they can help you with that last one. They know how to build websites that get results, and they love doing it. So... 
Don't spend your final hours trying to update your homepage. Let them spend their final hours uh, updating your homepages. That's right. Because at Yoko Seo, after they help you, they die. That's right. That's Chris's policy. That's right. Uh, hey, at least they died doing what they love. Am I right, ladies? Why not? Uh, then you can die the way you always wanted to, by riding a jet ski over a waterfall. <laughs> Way to go, Check Alex. them out at uh, yokoco.com slash TMOS. It's a lot of O's there. That's yokoco.com slash TMOS. And the first 10 organizations that reach out will receive a free website consultation and performance report. That's yokoco.com slash TMOS. And please, stay alive. All right, pal? <laughs> okay, I, pal. I always do. say Yokoco. I do too. <laughs> yeah, I Yo know. Coco. I know. It I sounds know. good. I Yoko thought it was Co. a chocolate <laughs> beverage. Rolls off better, but it's yes. Yoko CEO. Thank yes. you very much. Let's open up the uh, Yoko Audio Vault for <laughs> Monday uh, with Rob Spiewak. How about a little Rob? sexy music, Mike? All right. You recognize it? Murder, she wrote. Exactly. Tonight, after 60 Minutes and Murder, she wrote. Uh, Angela Lansbury. A tape that we uh, pulled drops from many years ago. Apparently, someone found it and reposted some... Uh, tapes on on youtube over the weekend it was trending red hot it and there was one that was a little more saucy than i remember it so this is angela lansbury when she was 63 back in 1988 but right. if it'll help you know this now she is 93 let's okay. hear some health mm. tips from miss angela lansbury tonight on murder she wrote i think femininity and sexuality go hand in hand it used to be thought that women lose interest in sex after menopause. But now we know that just isn't true. Whoa. Obviously, both you and your partner are different than you were 30 years ago. Yeah. Okay. But right. if you can accept the inevitable physical okay. and other changes, yeah. you can keep okay. romance in your life. All right. yeah. I believe it's important for a woman to try and maintain a certain sense of mystery about her yeah and i think that can continue to end he's a monster age. sometimes it's so easy to give up or to get lazy easy it's worth it to continue to present what? yourself as a woman of loveliness hey. and dignity sage advice yeah, that is she saying, keep it tight good. that's right and know she's looking her best because he's given up yeah doesn't mean <laughs> you have to continue to attract attention as a feminine sexual person yeah the right kind of attention doesn't have to stop unless you want it to. Okay. That's right. All right. In the next uh, scene, she went and she doubled. had sex with Tom Bosley as Sheriff Amos Tupper. <laughs> Can you send me that? Yeah, I can. Thank you. Uh, I needed one more. Really I needed for a little great. while longer. What a great, what a great <laughs> lay. That's what Tom <laughs> Bosley would say. That's what Bosley said. What a great lay. Isn't that a great lay. <laughs> 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 Jessica Fletcher, a great lay. Great lay. Hey, put down your typewriter, Jess. Come over yeah. here. Why? Who thought I could get laid in this little seaside <laughs> town? Everybody's dying every week, and I'm still getting laid. <laughs> oh, God. Help me, help me, help me. Oh, That's right. God. Sex, she wrote. Um, yeah. Did you know, I did not know this, there was one episode of Seinfeld that had vocals during the theme song. Mm. Episode one of season three. How the hell do you put vocals to that theme? It's It's got scat vocals. And here's the funny thing. Oh. Jerry called the music director and said, I want to change up the theme for season three. They didn't tell Castle Rock. So when the show aired on television, it's the first time that executives that own the show heard the theme with vocals in it. I have the example here. It's at, it's early enough in the show that he's doing stand-up during the theme. Yes. Remember, he used to do that? But listen yep. to the weirdly placed scat vocal. Is somewhere someone saying to their friend, you should see my doctor? He's the worst. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's the worst. He's the absolute worst there is. is it a Whatever you've got, it'll oh be worse God. after you see him. Yeah. It's just a, he's a butcher. A man's a butcher. And then there's always that... Make sure that you tell him that, you know, you know me. Why? What's the difference? He's a doctor. What is he? Oh, you know Bob. Hey, oh, okay, I'll give you the real medicine. And everybody else, I'm giving Tic Tacs. And I don't know if that airs Very in syndication subtle. or not. It sounds like right. e easy to beat. Easy yeah, to beat same, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Thinking the same easy thing. to beat. But it's, it was, I just, I never knew that. And I yeah. guess it was and before it was a massive hit. Weird. So. Yeah, weird. Mm hmm yeah, and then not, he not had much sex. more to say about it. it no, really this was uh, no. I thought it was fascinating, but I, I, yes. I, I, you know what? 
I feel strange knowing that now. Do you want me to send that to you after the Lansbury tape? No, the Lansbury's going straight to my wife. Of course. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> She's going to be like, you uh, monster. I'm sure it's going to the wife, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Amos yeah. Tupper. How is Jess Fletcher? <laughs> Great leg. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, have you ever wondered what it must be like to wear the Deadpool suit? Oh, I can imagine. Ryan Reynolds is so funny, and he disgusted. And he's and- so fit. I mean, he that's is. why he gets away with that yeah. stuff. Yeah, but listen to this. This is a great description. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like a big red body condom. Yeah, but yeah, sure. But- Call it a suit, whatever you want. It's just like a it. team of people that get that thing on. Like and I'm a- always like so terrified I'll like throw up in the mask or something. You, you know, I have all these weird... Uh, oh, yeah. Sneeze. Do you ever sneeze in the mask? I have all the time. You have sneeze. You have one of those like scratches that you just... Yeah, no, nothing. There's nothing that can... There's no space in that thing at all. When I put it on, I can actually taste my own genitals. It's disgusting. Uh, and I he, have to. <laughs> that is talking about a guy that deserves the money he mm, gets yes. paid. He is so bankable. He yeah. is so phenomenal, really. And wow. I close I, with I'm this. Up, I'm going to go see the second one. I'm going to look forward to it. I in wanna, the theater. Yes. Yes. In the motion I picture will go house. I see it in the theater. Yes. So, absolutely. W- you know what? Bring Angela it's funny Lansbury. and it's sexy and it's exciting. It's yeah. fun to, I don't think about Naughty. anything other than the, the, the character and his yeah. lines. That's it. Mm. They've got me into the comic book universe. Deadpool. Thank you, Oscar, for that recommendation. Mm-hmm. I do like Deadpool. Who, ca- All right. who can't like Deadpool? No, it's, 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 it's unnot likable, if that's mm-hmm. such a thing. Uh, Lindsey Buckingham has left Fleetwood Mac. You know, they left under, he left under bad circumstances. We're going to close with this. The sad thing about this tape is he's making this announcement at a gig, and it sounds like he's playing a library. This is Lindsay. Who's this is Lindsay the making the announcement about what ha- what happened with the leaving of the band. And he's with another band now. He's got a backing band, and he's doing a solo effort. But you so know, he's talking about Fleetwood. Yeah, Mac. Fleetwood Mac is still playing the big, big rooms, right? Arenas. Right. And so here's Lindsay Buckingham. But the funny thing is, at the end, because the crowd is obviously still on Lindsay's side. For the last three months, I have sadly taken leave of my band of 43 years, Fleetwood Mac. Uh, This was not something that was was really my doing or my choice. I think what you would say is that there were uh, factions within the band that had lost their perspective. Well, (laughs) it doesn't really matter. The point is that... <laughs> she might as well have been on the stage with him. She was so well by F Stevie Nicks. F Stevie Did you Nicks isolate that? Yeah, and I can, use it as a drop. Yeah, can absolutely. I hear that one more time? Because yeah. he says, "All right." For Just the lady. last three months, I have sadly taken leave of my band of forty-three years, Fleetwood Mac. And also, his uh, reaction is pretty classic. Was, was really my doing or my choice? I think what you would say is that there were uh, factions within the band that had. Lost their perspective. Stevie Nicks. Well, it doesn't really matter. The point is that. The point is that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, Stevie you're Nicks. absolutely right. He's saying. <laughs> Moving on. Really, yeah. All right. Weird. I got to go and see Jessica Fletcher. That's your magic audio Woo. vault. Have a great Monday, everybody. Woo. That's it, people. Thanks for joining us for the Mike O'Mara Show. Don't forget to listen 24 7 on our new Play a Pod app. Time coded bookmarks and all sorts of great stuff. All snail mail for the show can be sent to Mike O'Mara's show, Box 32101, Washington, D.C., 2007. Each day, on average, 96 Americans lose their lives because of a gun. Check out every town for gun safety and find out how you can end the tragedy of gun violence for good. For Oscar Santana and Rob Spiewak, this is Mike O'Mara inviting you to join us once again for the best part of your day, the Mike O'Mara Show. So long, everybody. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao. Before you go, please make a mental note. Today's show was made possible by the TMOS bonus packages. You can secure yours right now by going to MikeOmeraShow.com and clicking on the red bonus banner. Buy it or give it. Either way, you're helping out TMOS, and that's a good thing. Thank you, and go in peace. Tonight on Murder, She Wrote. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment.